people are captivated with the superpowers of spiders. Spiders date back over 300 million years. We are fascinated with spiders. They live everywhere and they conquered all the natural habitats. From their unique predatory behaviors to the silk masterpieces they weave, science is uncovering some crazy things about spiders and their silks. It is seven times lighter than silk, as strong as silk. New breakthroughs are revealed about the spider's uncanny abilities. If spiders are detecting sounds through their web, through the air, that's very new and exciting. There's a lot of secrets that the spiders are still holding. It's exciting to be at the cutting edge of spider sensory biology. It just keeps amazing me. Spiders are among the earliest animals to live on land, evolving from water creatures over the past 300 million years. There are all kinds of spiders. Not all of them spin webs, but they all produce silk. All of them can make silk, but many of them use silk in very different ways. So some will make silk for webs that they catch things with, and other spiders don't use it like that at all. How such a tiny, fragile creature can produce something so strong and flexible has piqued the curiosity of scientists for ages. While they're able to produce these fantastic chemicals that they're able to interact with their environment, you know, their venoms and their silk proteins, they're also just very vulnerable, they're very delicate. Spider silk is special because it is a multifunctional material produced by spider in a fraction of seconds. They use silk as a tool. A spider's silk is integral to their entire life cycle. And that silk is so essential to their life, their survival, their evolution. Spider silks are made of protein. Spider silk is proteinaceous. There's almost 50,000 named species of spiders. Most make multiple kinds of silk. So there's a lot of kinds of silks, and it's a very, very unique kind of protein that are only found in spiders. So a spider web is made up of multiple different types of silk. It's not all the same. And spiders seem to have adapted different ways of making silk with different types of proteins to make different things better. The advancement of genomics in recent years has been a big boost to studying the evolution of spiders' silks. What's really absolutely revolutionized my work is the Human Genome Project, which just really pushed DNA sequencing technology forward. We're sequencing genomes of numerous species of spiders, and what we're finding is that these genes, we knew they were big, yes, they're big, but we're finding that they're evolving very, very quickly. Cracking the code on spider silk proteins can shed light on the mechanical mysteries of spiders. You could take a DNA gene sequence and you can predict the amino acids by actually studying the peptides. You can figure out how they're adding these slight modifications, these little bells and whistles to the silk proteins. Biologists are now looking at some spiders that can produce a special glue protein to make their webs stickier so they're able to catch new types of prey. We're trying to figure out how spiders turn the recipe into fibers into a very, very sticky adhesive. And this adhesive is used on a spider web, so spiders will sort of, you know, dot their capture spiral with it. And it's very, very important for how prey can get stopped by a spider web and also help adhere them to the silk. It's almost like rubber cement or sort of, you know, very, very, very sticky, viscous material, and that's the way it's used. And it turns out for glue, they're adding quite a bit of bells and whistles. So they're adding little bits of sugar. And that all seems to be really important for how you make a protein molecule very sticky. This research has revealed a genetic surprise. Spiders are evolving quickly. The amazing thing with spider silks is there's so many silks, there's, they have all these fantastic properties, super strong, you know, super tough, super sticky, but yet the sequences for them are changing all the time. When we discover a new typology of spider webs, it means that in that specific case, something happened during evolution. 
Researchers at the University of Trento in Italy recently discovered a predatory skill not seen before in spiders. The spider lifting mechanism is a quite simple procedure used by spiders in order to lift objects of any size. Niccolo Pugno and his research partner Gabriel Greco discovered that some spiders can produce a silk with uncanny lifting properties. So imagine a spider that is attaching a silk thread to an object. Due to its own body weight, the thread is pre-stressed with a force that is equal to the body weight of the spider. The ratio of the mass of the object being lifted and the mass of the spider creates a pulley effect and results in lifting the prey. Spider silk is here used as an external tool to overcome muscles limitations. They're actively using their silk as pulleys. Like, that's incredible. And they can lift prey many, many, many times heavier than themselves. For these little, tiny little spiders that live on the ground, they catch prey. How did you get that up in your web? And so that's just like a new property of silk. It's the proteins that determine all these unique properties. Different silks are made from different proteins and they have, therefore, different mechanical properties. It is seven times lighter than steel, as strong as steel. Spider silk becomes one of the best known material in absorbing kinetic energy. And now, Professor Ron Miles and graduate student Jin Zhu at Binghamton University have uncovered another fascinating property of spider silks. They can help spiders hear. Spiders are arachnids, and arachnids have never evolved antennae. We know they can see, we know they can taste things, you know, they have mouths. So how else do they sense their world? Humans use their eardrum to hear, but many animals, including spiders, use hairs on their body to hear or sense vibrations. Well, it turns out for spiders, vibrations are really, really important to them. Their bodies are covered with little hairs on it, and those hairs can sense all kinds of vibrations. Spider silks do in fact react to sound. And now researchers believe their webs play an integral role as well. They're nocturnal, so they depend on different sensory systems to do this. One being vision, another also being sound, and we also expect that they're able to detect prey through their web as well. And as we're sequencing whole genomes now, and as we're learning about properties of silks that I never even thought about, now we find out that silks transmit vibrations. Maybe they're part of how spiders are hearing in a way. Armed with this new information, researchers like Jay Staffstrom believe that the ogre-faced spider uses sound to catch prey. So they'll make a, a frame web that looks a little like the letter A, and then they'll make a, a fuzzy rectangular net that they'll hold with their front four legs. And when they detect a prey item, either walking beneath them or flying around them, they'll reach out and snatch it with this net and then eat it. A picture begins to emerge connecting the spider, the silks, and the web. We have to consider the fact that everything is connected. How are they coordinating this? That's something we, we, we want to try to figure out to sort of understand what's the intersection of the silk, the hearing, and the vision in prey capture. If a sound occurs in the field and a spider is on its web, in the same way that a spider can detect vibrations of something touching the web, they should also be able to detect vibrations caused from sound helping in its accuracy of the, the prey strike and actually capturing the, the insect. So spiders get a lot of cues transmitted from the silk itself, the vibrations of the silk. They know the direction that something has intercepted their web. They're almost like IDing it, getting all these cues from their web. If spiders are detecting sounds through their web, through the air, that's very new and exciting. We, we hadn't really thought of spiders being able to sense sound this way. And because I study the silk proteins, I want to know what is it about the silk proteins that's associated with transmitting vibrations? 
whether they're directly, you know, from an insect struggling in, in the silk or if it's acoustic. In the 50s and 60s, the Hoy Lab was looking at jumping spiders and showed the same result that spiders can hear through the air, not just through the ground or potentially through the web. Just the fact that spiders can hear without ears like we have is, I think, very exciting. Potential implications for this may just change the way we detect sound and make microphones in the future. We might be able to use the mechanical properties of the silk then for better microphones or hearing aids, directional acoustic sensors and, and things like that. Trying to figure out how spiders use silk in ways that we haven't known before and then try and co-op that for our own uh, sensing and technology needs. Other human benefits and applications from spider silks are emerging from all this research as well. There are a lot of research applications. Spider silks could be used for sutures, they could repair tendons, they could be parts of ballistics, the anti-ballistic type gear where you would want to have flexible body armor. They're also being talked about for even high performance athletic wear. Anything where that would benefit from a material that was lightweight and stretchy, but also strong. The possibilities for spider silks are exciting, but it will take time to make these promising applications accessible to all. Spider silks are now being mass produced. One of the most common ways to do it is in microbes. Now it's still pretty expensive. I'm not expecting anytime soon me as a consumer to be able to buy things at a reasonable cost. No matter how you spin it, spiders are extraordinary creatures that continue to amaze. It's exciting to be at the cutting edge of spider sensory biology, trying to figure out how they're detecting things that we can't detect or in a totally different way. I think we're really going to learn a lot about genetics by studying them. So even if somebody wants to take the spider out of the work, there's just a lot of science to be learned from them. We are just in the beginning in understanding completely spider concepts and spider webs related concepts. There's a lot of secrets that the spiders are still holding, how they make their webs, how they use their webs, and we can learn from that.